The Brothers Karamazov Reimagined, an extended introduction, a course by Patrick Bergman. Welcome, and thank you for joining this comprehensive exploration of Fyodor Dostoevsky's monumental work, The Brothers Karamazov. This analysis promises to guide you through one of the most profound novels ever written, an intricate tapestry interlaced with philosophical inquiries, moral dilemmas, and an in-depth study of the human condition. As we delve into this work, we will reflect on the timeless questions and truths that Dostoevsky skillfully presents, enriching our comprehension of what it means to be human. Together, we will ponder, explore, and perhaps even find answers to some of life's most profound questions. We invite you to engage deeply with this masterful text, for The Brothers Karamazov is not merely a story to be read, but a philosophical experience to be lived. Before we dive in, a short note on the themes we will use, the use of names in this novel, and the epigraph that opens the book. As we embark on our exploration of the brothers Karamazov, you are also invited to delve into five profound themes that will be important. These themes illuminate the very soul of Dostoevsky's masterful work, offering insights into both the characters and the human condition itself family dynamics, and inheritance. Within the Karamazov family, we'll unravel the complexity of relationships and the influence of inheritance. How do family bonds shape character, identity, and destiny? How might our own familial inheritances guide or limit us? Morality and the quest for truth. Next, we'll turn to the moral landscape, where we'll grapple with the nature of good and evil, innocence and guilt. Through the experiences of the Karamazov brothers, will seek to understand the eternal struggle between base desires and lofty ideals. What does it mean to be moral in a world filled with injustice? Faith, doubt, and spirituality. In exploring the spiritual journey of characters like Alyosha and Ivan, we'll ponder the balance between faith and doubt. How do belief and skepticism coexist, and what role do they play in our search for meaning? Justice, society, and punishment. Through the lens of a large trial, we'll probe the notions of justice and society, uncovering how the novel reflects the broader dynamics of Russian society during this period. What are the true measures of justice, and how do they intersect with societal norms and individual conscience? Existentialism and the human condition. Finally, we'll delve into existential questions about free will, meaning, and human suffering. How does the struggle with existential dilemmas shape our understanding of self and our place in the world? We also need a note on the names and nicknames used in the novel. In Dostoevsky's masterpiece, names are not merely identifiers, but profound symbols reflecting relationships and the character's existential stance. The use or absence of nicknames serves as a mirror to the intimacy or distance between characters. Yes. Many of the characters have several different names, but that also tells us something. Alexei, Alyosha. Almost universally called Alyosha, his nickname is a testament to the warmth and affection others feel for him, embodying his compassionate nature. Ivan, Vanka. His seldom used childhood nickname, Vanka, hints at a lost emotional connection, contrasting with his adult life where his formal name emphasizes intellectual isolation. Dmitri, Mitya. Called Mitya by those closest to him, this nickname's occasional use signifies a divided relationship with those around him. Through these name-related clues, readers can unravel the complex interpersonal dynamics and delve deeper into the existential and ethical dilemmas that permeate the novel. The intimate Alyosha, the distant Ivan, and the divided Mitya symbolize various facets of humanity and provide a rich linguistic tapestry that enhances our understanding of one of literature's most profound works. This is Patrick, and I thought I would just stop by and say hi, because now the analysis of book one is starting, and I will see you after that to bring up some quotes and more. See you there. The whole novel starts with what is called the epigraph. It is vital you understand this, since Dostoevsky's use of a biblical epigraph in the brothers Karamazov symbolizes sacrifice and transformation. 
setting a thematic tone for the character's spiritual journey and extending a universal message about the human condition. The epigraph is a Bible quote and reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. This is from John 12, 24. Dostoevsky's choice of this biblical epigraph sets the philosophical tone for the brothers Karamazov, inviting readers to ponder sacrifice, transformation, and spiritual rebirth. This metaphor represents the necessity of self-surrender and the relinquishment of the ego. Just as the grain must die to yield a harvest, so must the characters in the novel experience a form of death to their old selves to attain personal growth and spiritual awakening. As Robin Foyer Miller says, it is a book about damnation and salvation. Elder Zosima's later reference to this verse emphasizes the spiritual journey that many of the characters undertake. It's a call to humility, compassion, and a higher moral purpose. The struggle of the Karamazov brothers with their passions, intellect, and faith mirrors the death and rebirth depicted in the epigraph. Their transformation, Dmitri's atonement, Ivan's intellectual crises, Alyosha's spiritual blossoming, Grushenka's move to compassion, echoes the eternal cycle of life, death, and resurrection. The epigraph transcends the confines of the novel, speaking to the human condition. It's a profound reminder that growth often comes through sacrifice, that in letting go of our old selves, we may find a path to something richer and more meaningful. This profound metaphor forms the spiritual core of the novel, acting as a guiding light for both the characters within the story and the readers embarking on this literary journey. It is a timeless symbol of hope, redemption, and the transformative power of faith. Now over to book one, A Nice Little Family. Book one of the brothers Karamazov introduces the hedonistic father Fyodor, his three contrasting sons Dmitri, Ivan, and Alyosha, their mothers plus the elder Zosima. This opening sets the stage for a deep exploration of family dynamics and moral dilemmas. Please note that book one is played out in the past since it covers what has happened so far. Here is the summary of Book 1, Chapter 1, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. Fyodor, a local landowner known for his sensuousness and muddle-headedness, collects his wealth through opportunistic dining at others' tables. He has the rank of a sponger. His marriage to Adelaida Ivanovna Miusov, a beautiful aristocrat, stems from a desire for her generous wedding gift while she seeks an exciting escape in Fyodor since she lacks mental freedom. The marriage soon descends into chaos as Adelaida develops a deep contempt for Fyodor, often physically abusing him. Undiscouraged, Fyodor drains her finances and attempts to transfer her property to his name. When Adelaida escapes with a poor seminarian, she leaves her three-year-old son, Dmitri, in Fyodor's care. Embracing his newfound freedom, Fyodor establishes a harem at home and indulges in heavy drinking, letting the servant Grigory take care of Dmitri. Despite his decadent lifestyle, Fyodor revels in playing the role of the wronged husband, lamenting Adelaida's abandonment to anyone willing to listen. His dramatic display suggests his enjoyment in gathering sympathy, and many found it disgraceful. Upon hearing about Adelaida's death from either typhus or starvation while preparing to confront her, Fyodor exhibits a complex mix of jubilation and sorrow, reflecting his tangled emotions for his first wife. Let's read that section of the book. Karamazov was drunk when he learned of his wife's death, and some say he exclaimed joyfully, raising his hands to heaven, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. But according to others, he wept, sobbing like a little boy so that people felt sorry for him, despite the disgust he aroused in them. It is quite possible that they all were right, that he rejoiced in his regained freedom and wept for the woman from whom he had been freed, both at once. In most cases, people, even the most vicious, are much more naive and simple-minded than we assume them to be. And this is true of ourselves, too. Here is the analysis of Book 1, Chapter 1, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. The title of the book is A Nice Little Family, 
but, as will immediately become apparent, the idyllic tone is, in fact, ironic. Already on the first pages, Fyodor is drunk, cheats his wives, and forgets his children. The author introduces Alexei as the main character, simultaneously highlighting the corrupt origins of the Karamazov family's wealth. As we will learn, it can be debated who is the main character, or if there are more than one, and not only Alyosha and Fyodor are mentioned in Book One, many of the main characters appear here, and you might also say Dmitri is the hero, since he is so prominent in Book One three and later, a mix of thoughtful and mindless at the same time. Fyodor acquires his wealth through deceit, exploitation, and a loveless marriage to Adelaida, revealing his selfish nature and disregard for the concept of family. His characterization as a muddle-headed madcap and an unapologetic sensualist highlights his shameless nature, while his ability to marry two worthy women showcases the enigmatic Karamazov charisma his actions also demonstrate how he corrupted the concept of family even before his children were born. Adelaida marries Fyodor to upset her family, realizing too late his true nature. She chose him to anger and frustrate her family by marrying someone from a lower class. Her violent and unhappy marriage, followed by her abandonment of Dmitri, likely shapes Dmitri's future character. Adelaida leaves Dmitri in Fyodor's care, thereby exposing him to his father's manipulative behaviors and risking the perpetuation of Fyodor's negative habits, allowing Fyodor to potentially shape the boy's character in his image. Starting harems in your house and totally neglecting your child is awful, of course. Fyodor enjoys manipulating public opinion, portraying himself as a wronged husband despite his indifference and infidelity. This reveals his enjoyment of playing roles for personal gain. The book states, in most cases, people, even the most vicious, are much more naive and simple-minded than we assume them to be. Contrary to the narrator's claim of human naivety, Karamazov's reaction to his wife's death showcases a contradictory and multifaceted emotional state. He seems to feel both joy at his newfound freedom and sorrow for the woman he has lost. This duality in his response is not necessarily a sign of deceit or manipulation, but reflects a deeper complexity in his character. His ability to simultaneously rejoice and mourn reveals a richness of emotion that goes beyond simple naivety, hinting at a more nuanced understanding of love, loss, and liberation. Welcome to the summary of Book 1, Chapter 2. He gets rid of his eldest son. Dmitri grows up neglected after Fyodor abandons him to the care of his servant Grigory, simply forgetting about the boy, leading to Dmitri's erratic and wild lifestyle. Fyodor's indifference contributes to his failed education and time in military school. Adelaida's cousin takes an interest in raising Dmitri, intervening in his upbringing. Fyodor's response suggests possible play-acting or genuine ignorance of Dmitri's existence. Dmitri fails to complete high school, ends up in military school, leads a wild lifestyle in the Caucasus, and spends a lot of money, illustrating the consequence of his neglected upbringing. Dmitri's sense of entitlement and background parallel Elder Zosima. Dmitri returns to town to settle a dispute over inheritance money with Fyodor, emphasizing their strained relationship and setting the groundwork for future conflicts. Fyodor exploits Dmitri's nature, leading him to believe he might be indebted to his father, reflecting Fyodor's manipulative tendencies and paving the way for the catastrophe that forms the subject of the novel's first part. Dmitri's realization about possible indebtedness sets the stage for the novel's main conflict. Here is the analysis of Book 1, Chapter 2. He gets rid of his eldest son. Fyodor neglects his responsibilities as a father, reflecting his self-centered nature and lack of affection towards his children. His abandonment of Dmitri symbolizes a rotten fatherhood that foreshadows societal chaos. His indifference and possible play-acting reveal his manipulative character, emphasizing his depravity. Fyodor's possible genuine forgetfulness or play-acting ignorance about Dmitri's existence further unveils his manipulative nature. Themes of memory and forgetfulness start here and continue throughout the novel, influencing our perception of love and its sustaining power especially a focus on our positive memories from our childhood. Dmitri's entitlement contrasts with Fyodor's neglect, establishing him as a unique character among his brothers. This serves as a parallel to Elder Zosima, suggesting the impact of different circumstances on Dmitri's character development. 
Fyodor cleverly manipulates Dmitri, using his weaknesses to his advantage. This manipulation further emphasizes Fyodor's lack of paternal love and willingness to exploit others, culminating in an evil that will come back to haunt him. The conflict arising from the manipulation of Dmitri's inheritance by Fyodor foreshadows future struggles and tensions. The talk about the heritage, or lack thereof, triggers Dmitri's full panic and rage, spotlighting a very sensitive spot in the whole story. Pyotr Alexandrovich Musov is introduced, and as Erland Lagerroth says, Musov is a shallow representation of Western rationality. We will soon hear more from this most liberal man who almost stood at the barricades. Welcome to the summary of Book 1, Chapter 3, The Second Marriage and the Second Family. Fyodor's marriage to Sofia Ivanovna, an orphan, and his engagement in orgies illustrate his unfaithfulness and disrespect. Sofia's struggle with hysteria, her motherhood, her death, and her past psychological abuse leave an impact on Ivan and Alexei. The widow intervenes upon discovering poor living conditions, slapping Fyodor and taking Ivan and Alexei under her care, securing their education. Yefim Petrovich ensures the boys' education and grows their inheritances, acting as their saviour. Ivan's literary success and his move to mediate between Fyodor and Dmitri exhibit his maturity and responsibility. He stands on his own and is superior to many of the other's students. This is the first time all the family members gather in the small town, marking a significant moment in their history. Now it's time for the analysis of Book 1, Chapter 3, The Second Marriage and the Second Family. Sophia's life of suffering and religious devotion influences Alexei to join the monastery and shapes Ivan's perspective on the prevalence of suffering in the world questioning God's existence. Sophia's hysteria could be linked to an undiagnosed mental disorder. After being raised by a tormentor, this disorder has the worst soil to land in given Fyodor's total neglect of her and the children. Fyodor tells us that those innocent eyes of hers slit my soul open like a razor and this is a clear example of the light motif of sensuality. The widow's slap to both Fyodor and Grigory highlights her anger at their neglect and marks a turning point in Ivan and Alexei's upbringing. Her role, along with Polonov, as a surrogate parent, contrasts with Dmitri's upbringing, explaining some of the differences between the brothers. Ivan's beliefs regarding faith and obedience to the Orthodox Church reflect his ideas on maintaining social order, rather than religious conviction. Ivan serves as a mediator between Fyodor and Dmitri, foreshadowing Alexei's later role. It also stands clear that Ivan is the intellectual of them all. He is also the detached one, the eyewitness, a person who refuses to live on other people's charity. Fyodor's connection with Ivan due to intellectual pursuits hints at hidden depths within his character and contrasts with his otherwise base and neglectful behavior. The irony that Fyodor likes to imagine himself as learned through his son adds another layer to his personality. As Terras notes, Fyodor is a channel for slapstick throughout the novel. Here we see it in a sentence like, As to the slaps he had received, he dashed all around the town, telling everyone about the incident himself. Welcome to the summary of Book 1, Chapter 4, The Third Son, Alyosha. Alexei, the youngest of the brothers, is a lover of mankind and finds his calling through Elder Zosima, which leads him to choose the monastic life. Alexei's memory of his mother is that of a frenzied but beautiful woman, and he especially remembers his mother in the slanting rays on a quiet summer evening. Alyosha tolerates Fyodor's behaviors and never condemns them, which results in a sincere and deep love from Fyodor. Alexei becomes close to the family of Yefim Petrovich, who treat him as their own child. In school, he is well-loved, demonstrates modesty and chastity, and excels in his studies. Alexei has no awareness of the value of money and is unconcerned about who supports him. Pyotr Alexandrovich Miusov jokes that Alexei would always find someone to care for him, even in an unknown city. Fyodor returns from Odessa, looking older and more light-headed than usual, and is happy to make a fool of others if he can. Meanwhile, Alyosha's influence on him leads him to donate 1,000 rubles to the monastery in his first wife's name, not in Alyosha's mother's name. Despite his buffoonish behavior, 
Theodore exhibits knowledge of literature hinting at Voltaire while making fun of hell. Before completing his studies, Alexei decides to visit his father and find his mother's grave. After locating the grave, he announces his intention to join the monastery and gains Fyodor's consent. Fyodor believes that Alexei will pray for sinners like him and eventually return to him after being cured. Zosima, the wise elder, sees Alyosha as spiritually gifted and takes him under his guidance. Elders in the Orthodox Christian tradition, like Zosima, are considered to have reached spiritual perfection and Alyosha expects miracles from him. Let us go through the analysis of Book 1, Chapter 4, The Third Son, Alyosha. There's quite a lot to say here, since we are establishing the basis of Alyosha's existence. Alexei's faith is an embodiment of innocence and purity, often likened to the archetype of God's fool in Russian tradition. This concept of a holy fool emphasizes his divine innocence, wisdom through simplicity, and ability to see truth where others are blinded by worldly concerns, it connects him deeply with a spiritual realm and his dear mother and provides a unique perspective that influences those around him. Meanwhile, Alyosha is also described as health, strength and handsomeness, telling us that he is much more than a Eurodivie. Fyodor's relationship with Alexei evolves from mistrust to profound love, stemming from Alexei's acceptance and non-judgmental nature. This allows Fyodor to adjust his behavior, unlike with others, showing how Alyosha's kindness influences even the most stubborn characters. Beyond his often buffoonish behavior, Fyodor's remark, if they're not going to drag me down to hell, what justice is there in the world, reveals a surprising depth of knowledge and hints at a more complex personality. It underscores that he's not merely a distracted muddlehead, but has engaged with literature and philosophical ideas, further enriching the contrast between him and his spiritually inclined son. Alexei's warmth, humility, and lack of judgment draw people to him, including his own father. His positive influence extends beyond his family, reflecting his deep understanding of human nature and ability to forgive. His approach to life contrasts sharply with the negative traits inherited from his upbringing. Already as a child, he lived like a monk, never caring at whose expense he was living. Alexei's lack of concern about money despite never experiencing poverty, highlights his focus on spiritual rather than material wealth. His disregard for financial matters contrasts significantly with the attitudes of Dmitri and Fyodor. Musov says it best in the novel. Alyosha, Musov declared, may be the only man in the world who, if left all by himself in the middle of a strange city, inhabited by a million unknown people, would never suffer from cold or hunger for he would immediately be offered food and shelter, and if no one offered him anything, he would find everything he needed right away himself, and it would cost him no effort, nor make him feel in the least humiliated, nor, for that matter, would he be imposing himself on others. Just the contrary, they would all be only too happy to do things for him. Alexei's spiritual journey leads him to his mother's grave and away from conventional career paths, his quest for deeper meaning contrasts sharply with Fyodor's selfish pursuits. Fyodor's inability to remember his wife correctly and reliance on a servant for guidance further emphasize his self-absorption. Alexei's or Alyosha's family members present formidable challenges to his spiritual path. With a father who's often drunk and prone to making a buffoon of others, an older, violent, militant brother, and another self-centered intellectual sibling, Alyosha faces a complex and daunting familial landscape. These varied beliefs and behaviors within his family starkly contrast Alexei's spiritual pursuits, highlighting the obstacles he must navigate. The absence of a maternal figure adds to this complexity, emphasizing his isolation within his family and the arduous nature of his spiritual journey. Now let's summarize the last chapter in Book 1. Chapter 5, Elders. Alexei's healthy and clear-eyed entrance to the monastery reveals his realism, and his belief in miracles symbolizes his desire to connect with a higher truth. His attributes his willingness to enter the monastery to his mother as shown in this quote. Or perhaps his decision was somehow connected with the slanting rays of the setting sun on the icon before which his crazy mother had held him. 
Alexei's potential childhood memories with his mother at the monastery and his meeting with the dying elder Zosima underline his spiritual connection and the uncertainty ahead. Elders in the monastery wield vast spiritual influence, guiding disciples in self-conquest. Both nobility and commoners seek their wisdom, illustrating their broad-reaching respect. Zosima's love for Alexei contrasts with the mixed reactions he receives from others, highlighting the complexities even within a spiritual community. Alexei's proposal for a family meeting in Zosima's cell signifies his effort to mend familial bonds despite underlying conflicts and suspicions. Alexei's nuanced relationships with his brothers and his apprehensions about their meeting with Zosima emphasize his moral clarity and worries about potential disrespect to the elder. He notices that Ivan is somewhat of an enigma and that his two brothers are very different from each other. And now we have reached the analysis of the last chapter of Book 1, Chapter 5, Elders. And again, there are a lot to reflect upon. Alexei's realistic view aligns with the belief that faith generates miracles, contrasting Ivan's skepticism and atheism. This balance between realism and faith showcases Alexei's spiritual growth. Additionally, his pursuit of self-mastery and inner freedom, summarized in the idea that one may achieve complete freedom through a whole life of obedience, adds depth to his spiritual journey and reflects the monastic values he embraces. The influence of his mother's memory motivates Alexei's choice to join the monastery, reflecting a spiritual continuation of his positive childhood experiences. That's a difference between Freud and Dostoevsky. While Freud focuses on the negative things from our childhood, Dostoevsky focuses on the positive memories and how they can stay with us all our lives. Like Alexei entering the monastery also based on slanting rays of the setting sun on the icon. Elders' spiritual purity, believed to grant clairvoyance, reflects the community's faith in them. The commitment between the elder and believer creates a profound spiritual connection. Zosima's love for Alexei's innocence and the diverse responses towards him show the human tendencies present even in a devoted religious environment. Alyosha's intuitive understanding reveals the contrasting characters of his brothers, Ivan's aloof, self-absorbed contemplation and Dmitri's enthusiastic emotional connection. This insight underscores the complexity of family dynamics with Ivan's isolated pursuit of inner goals and Dmitri's admiration of Ivan creating a rich yet divided familial landscape. Alyosha's discomfort around Ivan's potential contempt and his respect for both brothers further highlight the nuanced relationships within the family. The gathering in Zosima's cell highlights the conflicting motivations within the family, juxtaposing selfish desires with Alexei's hope for reconciliation. His concerns about his family's attitudes towards the monastery and their potential failings underscore his understanding of their complexities and his desire for them to connect with Zosima's wisdom. Before we move on, you might wonder where they do all the things they do in the novel. It is not until late in the novel that Dostoevsky tells us the name of this town, Skoto Prigonevsk. Here you will learn a bit more about this town, which might help you imagine what happens where. Skoto Prigonevsk is the fictional city in Fyodor Dostoevsky's novel, The Brothers Karamazov. The town of Staraya Rusa, where Dostoevsky spent his later years, inspired Skoto Prigonevsk. Many locations in Staraya Rusa are depicted in the novel, including Dostoevsky's house, the greenhouse, the stinking river behind it, and a torn version of Grushenka's house. The name Skotoprigonevsk incorporates Skot, the Russian word for cattle, reflecting the central square in Staraya Rusa where cattle were sold. I learned that a modern English name could be Cattle Roundupville, and that this can be likened to Podunk. In American English, podunk is a term used to describe a fictional, insignificant, or out-of-the-way town. It conveys a sense of being remote or unimportant, similar to how Dostoevsky might have intended Skotoprigonevsk to symbolize a remote or mundane place. Houses of characters like Fyodor Karamazov and Grushenka are based on actual buildings in Staraya Rusa. From streets like Mikhailovsky and Grand Rue to rivers like Parussia, the novel describes the town with accuracy. Some scholars, like Dmitry Likachov, see the choice of Staraya Rusa as adding authenticity to the novel, despite others considering Dostoevsky's world as fantastical. 
Skoto Prigonievsk's detailed depiction allows it to stand as a model of small Russian provincial towns of the 1870s. When I went through the Berkeley course, led by Hubert Dreyfus, I learned more about the purity that Ivan and Alyosha are looking for, but in very different ways. And we end up in the German words of Reinheit versus Lauterkeit. Ivan seeks purity through detachment and intellectual precision, embodying the Greek ideal of Reinheit, where cleanliness is achieved by letting go of dirt, imperfection or impurity. Ivan's quest for purity mirrors the Greek tradition of philosophical reasoning and a rational understanding of the world. His purity is a form of intellectual and moral cleanliness, a rejection of the chaos and imperfection of human existence. He is self-sufficient, manages his life on his own, and seeks autonomy from others. Being free means independence from external constraints, but also that you are left on your own. Alyosha represents a Judeo-Christian sense of purity, Lauterkeit, characterized by transforming and embracing the dark side. Rather than rejecting imperfection, he sees purity as a process of spiritual transformation and alignment with divine principles. Alyosha's purity is rooted in faith, compassion, and an acceptance of human frailty. His path toward Lauterkeit is one of embracing and transcending the darkness, in alignment with Judeo-Christian teachings on redemption and forgiveness. He is ready to give his soul to Zosima. Being free means freeing oneself from the constraints of one's own desires, but also that you follow what someone else tells you to do. The contrasting pursuits of purity in Ivan and Alyosha illustrate a profound philosophical dichotomy present in The Brothers Karamazov. These differing paths shed light on the novel's exploration of human nature, ethics, and the ongoing struggle between reason and faith. Both brothers seek purity, but their methods and underlying philosophies set them on distinct paths, enriching the novel's thematic complexity. Welcome to the complex and intriguing world of the Karamazov family. As we delve into the story, we'll encounter characters filled with contradictions, passions, and desires. From the muddle-headed yet enigmatic Fyodor to the devoted and spiritual Alexei, each character plays a pivotal role in unfolding the tale. So let us explore their unique personalities, relationships, and the intricate web they weave together. For each of the main characters, you will see three slides, one as an introduction, one as continuous development, and one as the final analysis. This is to cover their full trajectory over the course of the novel. Other, more minor characters are introduced at the end of the book they appear in. For example, Madame Koklakov and her daughter Lisa are introduced at the end of book two. Since then, they have met Father Zosima and Alyosha at the monastery. Now let's take a closer look at some of the characters we met in book one, beginning with Fyodor, a man whose complexity embodies the essence of the story. Name Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. Role, Patriarch of the Karamazov clan. Appearance, described as bloated with insolent, suspicious eyes, plump lips, and almost decayed teeth. Character traits, morally depraved, greedy, self-indulgent, could easily win Worst Father of the Year award. Background, married twice and has three sons, Dmitri, Ivan, and Alyosha. Occupation, a small landowner known for his wealth, with the rank of a sponger inviting himself to dine at other people's tables. Note, introduced as a complex character, with a muddle-headed and scandalous lifestyle. But he is more complex than we see here in Book 1. Name, Dmitri Fyodorovich Karamazov. Role, eldest of the Karamazov sons. Appearance, described as strong and attractive, with a passionate and impulsive demeanor. Character traits, hot-tempered, impulsive, sincere, but often confused. Background, the only son of Fyodor's first marriage, with complicated relationships with his father and brothers. Occupation, a retired military officer driven by love and jealousy. Note, introduced as a character torn by inner conflicts prone to extremes. Name, Ivan Fyodorovich Karamazov, sometimes referred to as Vanechka or Vanka, but mostly just Ivan. Role, second son of Fyodor Karamazov, intellectual and atheist. Appearance, described as gloomy and withdrawn. Character traits, Highly intelligent, analytical, conflicted, and skeptical. Background. 
neglected by his father in childhood, returns as a stranger in love with Katerina Ivanovna. Occupation, well-regarded intellectual who demonstrated brilliant aptitude for learning. Note, introduced as a mediator between his father and elder brother, struggles with concepts of God, morality and love. Name, Alexei Fyodorovich Karamazov, commonly known as Alyosha. Relationships, youngest son of Fyodor Pavlovich and Sofia Ivanovna, brother of Dmitri and Ivan. Appearance, radiates serenity with handsome features, deep grey eyes and dark brown hair. Personality, possesses a compassionate, introspective nature exuding humility and calmness and demonstrates a deep love for humanity. Background, raised by Yefim Petrovich Polonov during childhood, later became a monk under the guidance of Elder Zosima. Note, Alyosha serves as a moral compass in the novel, embodying the ideals of love, compassion, and spiritual devotion. His journey from a young novice to a mature monk highlights his growth and influence on the characters around him, making him a central figure in the exploration of faith, morality, and human nature in The Brothers Karamazov. Name, Elder Zosima. Role, the most revered elder at the monastery, attracting followers from all over Russia. Teachings and values emphasized God's love and the embrace of all living things, encouraging the practice of kissing the earth. Appearance, tall, lean and vigorous, with a pious countenance. Influence on Alyosha, serves as Alyosha's spiritual guide and the catalyst for his decision to enter the monastery and dedicate himself to Zosima's teachings. Note, Zosima's profound impact on Alyosha's spiritual journey and his embodiment of love and humility underscore his pivotal role in the narrative. Through his teachings and interactions, Zosima becomes not only a religious mentor, but also a central figure in the exploration of faith, compassion, and the human soul in The Brothers Karamazov. Name, Adelaida Ivanovna Karamazov. Role, first wife of Fyodor Pavlovich, mother of Dmitri Fyodorovich. Appearance, beautiful, bold, and dark-skinned, with an impatient and strong demeanor. Character traits, rebellious, impulsive, a tragic figure shaped by her choices. Background. Born into the wealthy and aristocratic Miusov family, her marriage to Fyodor defied societal norms and had far-reaching consequences. Note. Adelaida's life embodies themes of societal rebellion, maternal abandonment, and the interplay between beauty and tragedy. Name Sofia Ivanovna Karamazov. Role. Second wife of Fyodor Pavlovich, mother of Ivan and Alexei. Appearance, innocent and beautiful. Her vulnerable demeanor contrasts with the other women in Fyodor's life. Character traits, innocence, vulnerability, a tormented soul shaped by tragedy. Background, orphaned daughter of an obscure deacon, she faced tragic circumstances that led to her marriage to Fyodor. Note, Sophia's character highlights themes of suffering and innocence, maternal sorrow and the exploitation of purity. Name, Pyotr Alexandrovich Musov. Role, wealthy and self-proclaimed European, with socialist and atheistic beliefs, seen as a pompous fool by the others. Appearance, exudes sophistication and cosmopolitanism, adhering to Western ideals. Character traits, liberal, atheist, socialist, but his actions often contradict his professed values. Background, cousin of Adelaida Ivanovna, owner of vast land and souls in Russia. Note, Piotr's character represents the clash between European Enlightenment and Russian tradition, adding depth to the novel's social commentary. Now it's time to hear what some existentialists might have said about the brothers Karamazov. Of course I am making this up, but we might find something of value when thinkers from the 1900s comment Dostoevsky's work. As a figure embodying reckless individualism, Fyodor Karamazov captures the existentialist theme of personal freedom and its potential misuse. His selfish existence, similar to Sartre's idea of bad faith, is defined by his refusal to accept responsibility for his actions. He can be seen as an embodiment of Kierkegaard's aesthetic stage of existence, dominated by sensual indulgence and refusal to commit to meaningful relationships. Dmitri's impulsive, passion-driven life, filled with duels, promotions and debts, mirrors the existentialist confrontation with the absurdity of life. Similar to Albert Camus' concept of the rebel, 
Dimitri's tempestuous character embodies a revolt against an unjust world and his father's betrayal, seeking authenticity and freedom in his own terms. Ivan's character echoes Nietzsche's Übermensch, living a life driven by intellect and individual will. His self-made success and introspective nature exhibit the existential emphasis on the individual's power and isolation in a meaningless universe. His intellect puts him at odds with his family, showing Sartre's existential concept of otherness. Alyosha's spiritual journey aligns with Kierkegaard's religious stage of existence, where one surrenders to the transcendent reality beyond the observable world. His faith in miracles alongside his realism embodies the existential paradox of simultaneously acknowledging life's absurdity and seeking meaning. The family reunion and the upcoming meeting with Father Zosima set the stage for a clash of the brothers' distinct existential paths. This mirrors the existential conflict of navigating individual freedom and authenticity amidst social and familial expectations, demonstrating Heidegger's being with, the tension of being an individual in a world of others. Simone de Beauvoir's concept of the other is exemplified in the women's characters and their roles in the Karamazov family. Adelaide and Sophia, both Fyodor's wives, are treated as secondary, existing merely to serve and satisfy the men's desires, echoing Beauvoir's assertion of women being made the other in a patriarchal society. Their absence in the present narrative, yet profound impact on the brothers, underscores their oppression and marginalization. Furthermore, the dominant narrative of male existential struggle might be critically viewed as a perpetuation of patriarchal norms, ignoring the existential crises faced by women an area de Beauvoir prominently highlighted. Again, let's use another framework to analyze what happens here. I've imagined what John Vivek could have said, based on his masterful awakening from the meaning crisis. Of course, John hasn't said these things, so this is my wild interpretation. Ivan Karamazov's deep immersion in intellectual pursuits is a testament to the flow state where full engagement and acute focus drive his scholarly success. Contrastingly, Dmitri's impulsiveness symbolizes an acute scaling down of attention to immediate stimuli. Alyosha's spiritual journey depicts the scaling up with an attention towards existential patterns, echoing the concept of attentional processing. Alyosha's spiritual transcendence under the guidance of Father Zosima mirrors Plato's allegory of the cave. His escape from the shadowy realm of family conflict towards a spiritual reality is paralleled in his decision to follow Zosima, illustrating a striving for higher states of consciousness. Fyodor Karamazov embodies the concept of the agent in an arena, where his chaotic existence shapes his son's individual journeys. His relationships and actions create a distinct worldview that heavily influences his children's understanding and interaction with their environments. Father Zosima symbolizes the attainment of higher states of consciousness, as evidenced by his saint-like status and the deep reverence Alyosha shows towards him. His character serves as an ideal for Alyosha, who desires the psychological transformation this higher state offers. Each son's unique reaction to their father's existential nihilism showcases how familial influence impacts personal development. Dmitri's impulsive desire for immediate gratification, Ivan's intellectual pursuits, and Alyosha's spiritual journey are distinct paths carved under the same legacy. The complex character arcs of the Karamazov brothers exemplify the struggle for personal meaning amidst the existential crisis. Their individual journeys underscore different approaches to this universal quest, highlighting the influence of inherited traits, personal beliefs, and societal expectations. That was pretty intense, wasn't it? But now you have gone through all of the summaries and the analysis pages of book one of the Brothers Karamazov. Congratulations, well done. Now follows three slides where I don't talk. <laughs> and two are themes that we brought up in the beginning and quotes from book one that I think are appropriate for those themes. And the last one is a slide about questions you can ponder about your own life in relation to book one. See you in book two.